There are very few firearm designers with as long and distinguished a record as John Moses Browning. In the early 20th century, Browning revolutionized firearms design by introducing effective and reliable semi-automatic firearms to the commercial market. I'll be showing you a few of these weapons today and try and shed some light on how they were used. Originally released as the Remington Auto-Loading Rifle in 1906, the Remington Model 8 was the first mass-produced American semi-automatic rifle chambered for a round more powerful than 3030 Winchester. The Model 8 was marketed mainly towards sportsmen hunting larger game. A quick look at the marketing material released by Remington shows hunters using the rifle against lions, bears, elk, and other large game throughout the world. They advertised the rifle as a close quarter rifle that could knock down game with its auto-loading capability and powerful 35 Remington cartridge. Some people might scoff at the idea of using a 35 Remington Model 8 as a big game rifle, but we have good documentation of it taking down lions, crocodiles, eland, cape buffalo, and even a rhino. The Model 8 was a relatively popular hunting rifle and was given a slight redesign in 1936. The stock and forend were changed to improve the design. These changes were welcome, but the Model 81 that was newly dubbed by Remington was showing its age. Other auto-loading options had entered the market, and the Model 81 was quietly discontinued in 1950. Here I have a later Model 81, chambered in the iconic 35 Remington cartridge. The first thing you'll notice about this rifle when you pick it up is how heavy it is. The rifle weighs 8 pounds, mainly due to the barrel sleeve that covers the 22 inch long barrel. This barrel sleeve is needed for the operation system to work on the Model 81. It is a long recoil operated system that uses a rotating bolt head. After firing, the barrel and bolt still locked together move rearward inside the receiver and compress two recoil springs. Then the bolt is held back while the barrel is returned forward by one of the springs, permitting extraction and ejection. Once the barrel is returned, the bolt is returned forward by a second spring, and in so doing so, picks up a fresh cartridge from the magazine and chambers it. There is room for five rounds in the fixed magazine. Stripper clips were used to load the rifle, but originals are hard to find nowadays although 3D printed versions do exist. Later on in the Model 8's lifespan, people, mainly police, want to expand the rifle's magazine capacity. Patents for models that could hold up to 15 rounds were created, and one company made detachable five round magazine conversions for the rifle. The Model 81 feels very particular to shoot compared to other weapons in its class. The rifle feels more like a carbine than a full-length rifle when held, making it very maneuverable and comfortable to hold. The recoil is very heavy compared to the cartridge it's firing, but it's still manageable. The leaf sights are fairly standard, simple to use, and still visible even in low-light environments. One of the more recognizable features of the rifle are its charging handle and safety. If you are an AK user, the operation of this gun will feel very familiar. Another particular feature of this rifle is how the brass ejects. With its purely mechanical operating system, the brass ejects very lightly, piling up at the shooter's feet rather than 10 feet away from him. The last neat feature of this rifle is the takedown option. Simply unscrew a portion of the forend and the rifle will come in too. A very handy feature when traveling. Throughout the past century, Thousands of sportsmen have used the Model 8 and 81 in their hunts. The Remington auto-loading rifle holds a very special place in my heart. It is, and will continue to be, my favorite sportsman's rifle. The Remington Model 11 is a semi-automatic shotgun that was designed by Browning at the same time he was working on the Model 8. The design was first produced by FN in Europe, but Remington quickly got the license to make their own Browning shotgun in 1905. This shotgun would become one of Remington's most successful weapons, selling 850,000 units 
until its discontinuation in 1947. The shotgun was originally marketed for sport hunters going after birds and small game, but militaries around the world quickly saw how useful a semi-automatic shotgun could be. This design saw combat in World War I, World War II, the Malayan Emergency, Vietnam, and the Rhodesian Bush War. This long and celebrated military history proves that these guns were effective enough to last the test of time. But beyond the trenches of France and the jungles of Vietnam, the average sportsman uses this shotgun for killing clays and birds rather than men. The Remington Model 11 is a staple in trap shooting and bird hunting, and there's a good chance you've seen at least one being used if you go shooting regularly. The Remington Model 11 operates similarly to its cousin the Model 8 and uses a long recoil system to feed shells into the chamber. The shotgun is very well balanced and is very easy to swing on target. The recoil is reasonable and follow-up shots are easy. The shotgun could hold four rounds in its tubular magazine, allowing one round to be chambered, giving the shotgun a total of five rounds capacity. This particular Model 11 is chambered in 20 gauge, which was one of three offerings for the shotgun, the others being 16 and 12 gauge. This shotgun has an aftermarket choke that was attached to the muzzle at some point, as well as an aftermarket butt pad. This shotgun has a lot of sentimental value to me, being the last memento from someone that really helped shape my early life. The Remington Model 11 is my favorite shotgun and I really don't see that changing anytime soon. If you are thinking of getting into shotgun shooting, I would definitely recommend the Remington 11 as they are fantastic shotguns and still relatively inexpensive. The last automatic browning I have is a much smaller weapon than the previous two. This is the Colt 1903 Pocket Hammerless. The Colt 1903, unlike its namesake Hammerless, is a hammer-fired automatic handgun chambered in 32 ACP. The 1903 Hammerless was designed by Browning and produced by Colt from 1903 to 1945, selling over half a million units. The Colt 1903 was one of the first auto-loading handguns to be specifically marketed for concealed personal protection. This could be seen in the multiple advertisements of the handgun being used to shoot highwaymen and burglars. A large part of the marketing emphasized the thinness and elegant style of the handgun. I would have to agree with Colt's marketing department on both accounts. The personal protection for civilians wasn't the only thing that the Colt 1903 was used for. It was used by United States officers during World War II as a personal protection weapon. General Patton had the most famous Colt, but other figures such as Al Capone and Tojo carried a Colt hammerless. This specific handgun was built in 1922 and is the third iteration of the 1903. It is in remarkably good shape for an 100 year old pistol and still shoots like a dream. The thin profile of the pistol makes it very comfortable to carry and the printing is minimal. The pistol's magazine holds 8 rounds of 32 ACP and is ejected with a heel release. The magazine of this specific handgun is pretty cool, as you can see where the worker held the mag and dipped it into the bluing solution. The handgun fits into my hands perfectly, and shooting the 32 ACP cartridge is very comfortable. My biggest gripe with this handgun is the grip safety. I'm not a fan of grip safeties generally, but I'll give this handgun a pass because everything else is so solid. Out of all the handguns I own, the 1903 is my favorite to shoot, and even after a hundred years, it's still being used for its intended purpose. John Browning was a master of firearms engineering and design. In my opinion, some of the best firearms ever made were created by him. I enjoy my Browning automatics very much, and will continue to use them for their intended purposes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This one might have been my most expensive one yet. 
If anyone in the United States knows of a gun store that has 35 Remington, please let me know. It's been really hard to get these past few years. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see all you guys out on the trail. The way that you wander is the way that you choose. The day that you tarry is the day that you lose. Sunshine or thunder, a man will always wonder where the fair wind blows. Jeremiah Johnson made his way into the mountains. He was betting on forgetting all the troubles that he knew.